Good morning, everyone. My name is Tuck. I'm Brother Tuck. I'm standing in for Pastor this morning. He has a, a doctor's appointment today, getting some stuff taken care of. Uh, I ask that you guys keep him in your prayers. He's doing just fine. We just ask that you would pray and have God's hand on him to continue to do better and better. Um, we just did this yesterday. Are we online? Pastor does this all the time. Are we online? Are we good now? Okay, so do I need to say my good morning again? <laughs> just in case, just in case we weren't online there a moment ago. Good morning. My name is Brother Tuck. I'm uh, filling in for Pastor this morning. We ask to keep him in our prayers. Um, he's doing just fine. Just ask that as he goes through his doctor's appointments, that he continues, that God continues to help him do better and better. In Jesus' name, Amen. Uh, this morning's devotionals, if you all could uh, pick up your Bibles, um, we're going to 1 Kings chapter 3, verses 5 through 14. And while we're doing this, I'm going to go ahead and turn my phone off, because that will be annoying. I didn't want to hear baby shark all of a sudden for my notifications. <laughs> okay, 1 Kings chapter 3, verses 5 through 14. In Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask what I shall give thee. And Solomon said, Thou hast showed unto thy servant David, my father, great mercy, according as he walked before thee in truth and in righteousness and in uprightness of heart with thee, and thou hast kept for him this great kindness, that thou hast given him a son to sit on his throne, as it is this day. And now, O Lord, my God, thou hast made thy servant king instead of David my father, and I am but a little child, and I know not how to go out or come in. And thy servant is in the midst of thy people, which thou hast chosen, a great people, that cannot be numbered nor counted for multitude. Give, therefore, thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people, that I may discern between good and bad. For who is able to judge this, thy so great a people? And the speech pleased the Lord, that Solomon had asked this thing. And God said unto him, Because thou hast asked this thing, and hast not asked for thyself long life, neither hast, hast asked riches for thyself, nor hast asked the life of thine enemies, but has asked for thyself understanding to discern judgment. Behold, I have done according to thy words. Lo, I have given thee a wise and understanding heart, so that there was none like thee before thee, neither after thee shall any arise like unto thee. And I have also given thee that which thou hast not asked, both riches and honor, so that there shall not be any among the kings like unto thee all thy days. And if thou wilt walk in my ways to keep my statutes, and my commandments, as thy father David did, then I will lengthen thy days. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, Lord, I pray for all the school kids this morning, Lord. I pray that you would open their hearts and touch their minds for the things that they need from this word. Lord, I just give you praise and thanks that I, your servant, you would choose and, and, and allow me to, to share your words, Lord. Just pray, God, that you would uh, use me, God. Make me small in all these things and your word and yourself large in all that we speak of today, Lord. Thank you for your word. And thank you most of all, Lord, that you would send your son to die for us, to be our sacrifice, to be our savior. Lord Jesus, in your precious name, we pray for all things and all God's people say, amen. All right. This morning, uh, what I see in this, and this has really touched my heart. I, I've seen this I, I, in my in my yearly Bible reading. I've already passed through here a few weeks ago, but it just continues to go through my mind. Um, what what Solomon really did here, and I think what it is is it's a pattern that God gave us that someone did with him that we should all follow after. Um, what would what would any of you ask God for if God came to you? If God came to you right now and said, hey, whatever you ask, I will give thee. What would you ask for first? Would you ask for a new car? 
or a new bike or a piggy bank full of money or maybe that he would take out that bully that's been bothering you down the street. Um, you would ask for forgiveness? Amen to that. That's always the first thing we should ask for, that's for sure. Thank you, Jesus. Um, what you see Solomon did here is the first thing he did was he identified himself with God and he identified God with himself. He gave God thanks when he said that thou hast showed unto thy servant David, my father, great mercy. God is merciful. We always need to recognize that first in anything before we get ready to ask him for anything. He recognized that he established himself in God's eyes because he knew that he was a little child. We're all little children in, in front of God. We really are. I mean, what do we know compared to the Lord? What, what, have, what kind of experience do we have compared to God, what God knows and what God can do? We're just little children. Even the most smartest of us amongst us are still little children in front of God. And Solomon recognized that fact, and he identified that when he started to ask, make his request to him. He humbled himself, and that's what we need to do with the Lord when we, when we make requests to him. Is we need to humble ourselves. We need to realize that God has done it all for us. God sent his son, our Lord Jesus, was our sacrifice because we cannot help but be sinners all of our life that we're stuck and God knew we would be stuck forever without him. God sent his son and his son did all the work for us. His son paid the penalty for us. And we always need to realize that first when we, before we make requests. We get, give thanks for that. Jesus did it all. Um, then he made his request. And what did he request? He asked for wisdom. He asked for discernment. He asked for understanding. Isn't that what we should always ask for with everything we do? Isn't that how, what we should really, it, when we ask for ourselves, he asked for himself. He asked for himself that he have wisdom and discernment. But who was he asking for? Was it, he asked for himself, but who was he leading? He was leading God's children, the people of Israel. So he was really praying for the people of Israel because he wanted to be a good leader for them. He didn't want to be a bad king. He didn't want to be a, a bad leader. He wanted to be a good leader for them. He wanted to have wisdom and understanding to help guide them. And that really is a prayer for the, for the people of Israel. Uh, that was really a blessing for them. Um, so this is a pattern that we need to follow when we ask God for things. What should we, when we pray to God, when we ask God, when we have our request for him, should we be praying for just to receive stuff for ourselves, okay? Or should we pray that in a manner that when we, we do ask God for something for us, that it's going to be a blessing for others? Um, when we ask for wisdom, we, we should pray for wisdom. Say, God, help me be smart. Help me, help me to, to be wise. Help me to make good decisions. Help me to be wise when I'm dealing with others, when I'm helping others. Show me how to be wise so that I can help others th to the best of my ability. Um, help me to be wise. Help me, help me to be smart and have understanding when I'm doing my studies and that I be less stressful for my parents when I'm doing my schoolwork. <laughs> huh, Molly? <laughs> you know, I mean, those prayers... You know, when you're praying for things like that for yourself, you're actually praying for others as well. Praise the Lord. <laughs> you know, um, pray for pray for wisdom. Pray for wisdom when you're reading your when you're reading your Bible. Um, there's God has given us a whole book full of His living Word to guide us by His wisdom. Okay, we should always pray before we read our Bibles. We should always ask for wisdom. We should always ask that God open our eyes and give us discernment to understand what he is showing us, how he is speaking to us through his word. You know, there's so many times I read my Bible and, you know, I've needed, some, I've needed something and a particular passage has opened my eyes to that. And yet you can go back and read that same passage later and God will add to that or he'll show you the other layer, the other level that, that you need to understand in there that helps you with a whole other thing. That's why God's word is, is, is called the living word, because it truly is living. He speaks to us. He literally speaks to us through his Bible. It's not, this isn't a history book, although there is history in here. This is continuous, this is a continuous spoken word from the Lord for us. And we should ask for wisdom when we're reading our Bible. Um, the Bible helps us, it shows us how to, how to pray. It shows us how to make our requests. 
Did I give you did I give you James 4 3? Four, three. I'm sorry about that. You know, when we're making a request to the Lord, there's so many times that it's it, we're just making the wrong request. In James 4, 3, it says, Ye ask and receive not, because ye ask amiss, that ye may consume it upon your lust. It means that you're just asking a selfish prayer. You're asking for things just for yourself. We should always be asking for things for others. Yeah, it's good to ask, say, hey, God, I need wisdom, please. But why don't you add that because it's like, I want to help people, Lord. I want to help my parents, or I want to help my children, or I want to help my neighbors. Lord, give me wisdom. Give me wisdom to pray right. Give me ris- wisdom to pray that I can pray for all the people in this world that are going through COVID-19 right now. You know, give me wisdom to pray for people that, you know, God's will is that, that all should be saved, that none should be lost. You know, so let me help me pray that, God, you continue to call on all the people's hearts, Lord, that it's not too late that, Lord, there were people that will still turn their hearts to you, that will still surrender and ask you to be your, th- their Savior. These are the things that we need to request. These are, these are good prayers. These are, these are right prayers. Um, by the way, that's the title of my message is The Right Prayers. <laughs> um, you know, when we're making a request to the Lord, we have to have our hearts right with God. We have to. Um, in Psalms 51.10, David is praying. And he says, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. He's saying, you know, God, I w- please make my heart right with you. Help me. You know, cleanse my spirit, Lord. M- give me a right spirit, Lord. The right spirit is to have the Holy Spirit and to not be quenched and not to be grieved, to the, the, have the Holy Spirit grieved but for it to be operating fully and with joy within you. Uh, the only way we can have our hearts right with God, 1 John 1, 9, is if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We've we got to keep a, 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 a right heart with the Lord. We have to be able to, in order to talk to God, in order for him to, to be receptive, receptive and to hear us, we have to be right with him. Which means we know, we have to acknowledge all the time. It's like, hey, Lord, I know I fall short. I know that I've sinned. I, I, and tell them the sins that you know that you've committed. And, 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 and sometimes you have to say, Lord, I need help because I think there's probably things I'm doing and I'm not paying attention to. I don't understand or I'm not realizing that I'm sinning. And show me these things, Lord, that I can make it right with you. And show me that I can correct them and not do them anymore. And God will help you. That's a right. That's a right prayer. That's a right request. And when it comes to reading your Bible, when you ask for wisdom, and when you ask to, to fully understand the Bible, you have to remember that the Bible is important to the Lord. And reading His Word is important. Second Timothy two fifteen says, "Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth." You have to understand what's in the Bible, and you have to be able to discern. So that when you help others or, you, or you, you're witnessing to others or sharing with others your faith or even helping others that aren't quite to your level with understanding God's word, that you can rightly divide the truth. You can make decisions based on what's in the Bible. You could say, you know what, I, should I do this or not? Well, what does the Bible say? And when you can rightly divide it, when you know the Bible, when you know God's word, you can make the proper decision because you understand what the Bible says about that decision. <clears throat> and when you make right prayers, when you make the right request to the Lord, it says that that God told Solomon that because he did not ask for riches and long life, he didn't ask for him to conquer all his enemies, but because he asked for wisdom for his people first, because he asked that right prayer that he was going to give him honor and riches and long life and, and power over his enemies, that he was going to do, he was going to add unto all those things to him. Because he made a right request. And Paul also told the Philippians, Philippians 4.19, he says, But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Once we've accepted the Lord, God promises to take care of all our needs. We just got to ask for right prayers. He will grant right requests. You know, 
2 Timothy 2.15, when it talks about study to show thyself approved, it doesn't mean just the Bible. God has given us all these resources. He's given us the math and the science and the social studies and word building and English and Bible reading. He's given us all those things. We're supposed to study. We're supposed to work hard. We're supposed to work hard to show thyself approved. These things we'll take with us later in life. We'll be able to apply these things towards the jobs that we have, towards helping others. You know, what the jobs that we have, that helps support our families. You know, all these things that we, use, we learn now, we use later on to help support our families. That's a right prayer. That's a right request. You know, God, please help me to, to support my family. But we got to do the work, too. We got to put the work in. And a good right request would be, God, please help me to do this work. Please help me to work hard. Show me what I need to do. Show me my part in all this that I may do it. Anyway, that's what I got from Solomon's right request. I think it's a good pattern for all of us to follow. I know it's, it's really affected me, and it's affected my prayers. Um, it's, it's opened up. It made me realize how selfish I was being about some of my prayers, and it's helped me that I can s pray for the same things, but but... By praying for others with it too, um, you know. Pe there's people, you know. We have to have God has so much mercy for us that we have to have. We have to give other people mercy too. He expects that from us. Look what He does for us. And there's so many people out in the world today, and they don't know the Lord. And we need to be out there. We need to be merciful and be ready to share our faith. And we be, need to be ready to be pray for those people that are out there sharing their faith. And that the, the, our evangelists and our missionaries, and and, and but they they have families and they have needs, and no matter what, even if they don't know the Lord, that that we have our duty as servants of the Lord to pray for mercy for them, that God would help them, because God gives us mercy and God supplies our need, and that's what I have today. Amen. Yeah, let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for this church and this and Florence Baptist Academy. Thank you for Pastor Storm and the establishment of this, this academy here, for the resources that are been being made available and all the support that he gives to the parents of the children that go to this school, Lord. We just pray for the kids, God, that you would help them, Lord, that please just Help them with their enthusiasm. Help them with their attitude. Help them with their prayers, Lord. Help them that uh, they get their, their work done, Lord, that we keep going forward. Lord, we just pray for all the people out there with that are going through this COVID-19, the people that aren't being allowed to work right now, God, that you would continue su to supply their need, Lord. We pray for all the people that don't know you, God. We just pray that you continue to call upon their hearts. Send the witnesses that need to be sent, Lord, that they can receive your word, that they can hear your word, Lord that it won't return back void, Lord, but it would be increased in their heart. And therefore, the kingdom, your kingdom, would be increased by them receiving salvation. Lord Jesus, we just give you praise and thanks, most of all, for your sacrifice. You shed your blood. You poured your life out upon the cross to pay our penalty, that we don't have to die in our sin, that we can accept you and go to heaven. Thank you, Lord, so much for all you do for us. Thank you so much. Thank you for this church family. Thank you for all the people that are watching. Thank you for the school kids. In Jesus' name, amen. Miss Nancy, did I give you proper introduction? Applause, please. I will. Like right here? Wait, is that good right there? Okay. I'll just leave it. Amen. Thank you, Brother Chuck. Great message. So those of you are watching or those, those of you are here, I challenge you, take these scriptures, study them, apply them to your life. And like Brother Tuck said, what would you do if God came down here and asked you what you want? What would you do? I challenge you guys that. Okay. Those of you at home, call me. Let us know. What would you ask for if God came down and said he'd give you whatever you wanted? Call us. Let us know. Take these scriptures, apply them to your life, you guys. Great message, Brother Tuck. Okay? All right. So our next letter is A. So it's L-E-A blank E-R. 
call us. Let us know. You get five points today. Is it five points? Yeah. yeah. Five points today. Give us a call. Call my cell phone. Call the office. We'll be here till noon. And those of you that haven't came in and made an appointment yet, please make an appointment to come in and get your scoring, your testing, your new paces. And we'll see you guys soon. Love you guys. Miss you guys. Do your work. We'll see you soon. Have a good day.